Have you seen the man on the buffalo? Welcome back to RC Trails and today I'll be going over some issues I have with my buffalo that you might also have. First off, I want to say I love what G-Man has done with this buffalo. It has a K5 style body. I love the tires, the scale molded parts. Um, also love uh, that there's no body clips showing. That's a key thing. But there is still an issue that I'm still having till today and I'll show you towards the end of the video. Stick around. The first thing that I would change, but who am I? But their kit's a little confusing for first time builders. If you're experienced, it might not be such of an issue. The G-Made kits, they come with a couple of big bags and within those bags, a lot of parts. Now, the nuts and bolts and screws, they're perfectly labeled. But the problem with that is, you have to go through that like a Rolodex every time the kit is requiring a screw. As in an Axial kit, they have step A and they have bag A. So you don't have to keep going through those, uh, I don't know, 25 bags of screws or 20 bags of screws and seeing which one is the eight millimeter or M3. So it just makes it a little bit easier to build. Number two is the G-Made bumper and mounting system. I love that there's no body clips. I love the bumpers. They're molded plastic. They're hard, they're rigid. But if you want to change to a different style bumper, a bumper that's not actual made for the truck, then you're going to have to come up with a different way of mounting the body to the chassis. It might be magnets. Um, it might be actually punching holes through it, which I wouldn't recommend. I kind of like my trucks clean um, if you're able to do that. I know, for example, Axial, they have some trucks where you could um, mount the truck to the chassis or to the frame. So if you change the bumper, it's not gonna be an issue. You just replace the bumper and your mounting points are still there because they're not on the bumper, but they're on the chassis. Number three, number three, I, I mean, I would, I would like to see changed um, with the kits is they give you these stiff springs, right? The springs are the white ones. I went and I bought the green ones, which are the soft ones on the G-Made website. And it's still a little too springy for me, for my liking. You might like it, but I don't really like my, my trucks to spring. I don't think anybody likes their, their trucks to be springy. But eventually, I'm just probably just gonna change the whole um, shock system anyway, just to get them to the way I like them. Number four, numero cuatro. Uh, I would have liked to seen a little bit more um, consistent and deep panel lines. Uh, the panel lines around the doors, um, they kind of disappear. So if you have a deep enough panel line, you might be able to fit a brush or you might be able to fit a paint marker just to make it a little bit more realistic. Maybe on your G-Mate, the panel lines are fine. Um, but on mine, they definitely are deeper in one area and then they kind of disappear. If you're still with us, then there's no reason why you haven't subscribed. Number five, the issue that haunts me in my sleep not that serious. Now, before I show you my issue, uh, I would like to say if anyone has this issue and they resolved it, please let me know in the comments below so I could um, try out the steps uh, that I haven't already and maybe I might be able to fix it. I'm gonna go ahead and roll a clip of my issue. As you can see, the truck seems to drive fine. All of a sudden it starts to jerk uh, and drive and in reverse. So for me, I like to film the trucks. It doesn't make it look realistic. It kind of, it jerks way too much for me. It has a quick run fusion in it as the motor. So I know that's not the problem. It runs very smooth. I've replaced the axle gear, the bevel gear, because I took a look at it and didn't like the way it looked or didn't like the way it felt. So I replaced that. I replaced the plastic drive shafts to some metal drive shafts and that didn't seem to fix the issue. I have phased the drive shafts. Um, that hasn't fixed the issue. I was thinking maybe it's the throttle curve on my receiver, messed around with that. That didn't fix the issue. I thought maybe it was the grease in my gears. So I changed the grease from the factory grease to some white lithium grease. That didn't fix the issue. And then I started to think, and then it hit me. I didn't space the spur gear and the pinion gear, but there's a reason. Because the way the motor mounts, you can't, it doesn't give you an option. Like there's, there's no chance for you to space the pinion and the spur gear. Once you put 
the motor in, you're pretty much um, locked in there. So you can't, you can't really see the union of the spur and pinion gear. So if anybody knows how to do that on a G-Made Buffalo, um, go ahead and let me know in the comments. So as always, stay safe and go hit the trails.